It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Today, two outstanding elementary schools playing our game, University Park and Yorktown. We expect a terrific game here today, and we invite you to play along. You know, this is a little different because of the pandemic. We're on Zoom, so I am in the studio here in Landover, but all of our players, they are safe at their homes there. And uh, things are a little different. They don't have any buzzers like they normally have if they're here in the studio. And so it's not competitive that way, but we have maintained some things that we've always had on Science Bowl. 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. And we will have the same categories as we've normally had for our 35 years here on the air. And here are those six categories. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's Science Potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. All right, University Park, let's find out about you guys. Let's tell the people at home who you are and a little bit about you. So let's see. First of all, Andrews, would you wave to everybody? Thank you. A fifth grader, another fifth grader. We have Charlotte here. Hi, Charlotte. Nice to have you on the program. And Isaac is here too. Hey, Isaac. Boy, good looking group there, and we will find out more about them during the break, but let's get into the game here. Let's get to the first category, the green things questions for University Park. So you pee off if you're ready. Here is your five point question in green things. So that cattle could eat these prickly desert plants, botanist Luther Burbank developed some that were spineless. And cactus? Yeah, cacti. Make sure you have unmuted yourself so I can hear you. Andrew, cacti? you're saying yeah. something. Say it again. Um, cacti. Cacti is correct. Yes, indeed. All right. Here is your next question. Green things for 15 points. While the Red River in the United States is so called for its reddish brown silt that flows into it, the Red Sea in the Middle East is so named because it is filled with cyanobacteria, a kind of this blue-green photosynthesizing plant. Um, maybe like algae? Yeah, uh, algae. It is algae. Perfect, perfect. 25-point question. You're on a roll. The spotted lanternfly. The spotted lanternfly is a pest from Asia, and it's damaging and killing many important trees that we know of oaks and cherry trees and apple trees. It does this by piercing this P initial tube in plants that is filled with sap. P initial tube in plants, in trees, that is filled with sap. What do you think? Um, well, the first thing that came to my mind was pine, but that's not a tube. Yeah. Um, like, there's like, there's like the roots. But then, like, the yeah. sap is, like, in the trunk. Yeah. No, yeah, but he said, like, a, a tube. Charlotte, do you have any idea there? No. Correct answer here is the phloem. P-H-L-O-E-M. Phloem is the opposite of the xylem. Let's go on to the zoo. Get this one for five points. New research in Australia has discovered that, like dogs, these most famous marsupials that are on Australia's coat of arms can communicate with us humans. Um, kangaroos? Yeah, <laughs> who knew that kangaroos were like dogs? Yeah, they, you know, their eyebrows kind of go up and down too, like dogs, you know, they got a personality there. Good answer. Zoo for 15. Google recently paid tribute to Sudan, S-U-D-A-N. 
the last of the white northern variety of this gentle African behemoth whose scientific name is Bicornis, B-I-C-O-R-N-I-S. Name that animal. Well, bi means two, so maybe like a mammoth, but no, that wouldn't make sense. Maybe a rhino? Yeah, I guess guess is a rhino. That's it, it's the rhinoceros. I like how you think together. Good group think. 25 point question in zoo. If an animal walks on two legs, like an ostrich does, it's considered considered a biped, B-I-P-E-D, biped. If an animal walks on four legs, like a lion or a dog or an elephant, it's called a what? Quadped? Maybe. Quadruped or something? Quadruped? Yes, quad meaning four and ped meaning foot. Boy, you guys are doing well. You've only missed one so far. Here are your next three questions in body systems. First one. If a person promises something, but they don't really mean it, it's said that he or she is just paying this kind of service, which is named for one of these facial features. You have both an upper and a lower one. What kind of service if you promise something, but you're insincere? An upper and a lower. Lower and upper job? Like, yeah. Paying a yeah, job? Like lip. Yeah, paying a lip. That lip service. Good answer. All right. Here's a multiple choice question for you for 15 points in body systems. Someone who is suffering from dysphagia, that's spelled D Y S. P-H-A-G-I-A, dysphagia. Someone suffering from dysphagia has a hard time hearing, walking, or swallowing. Um, um, let's think through the word. Dis- hearing? Well, hearing, hearing would probably be deaf, but deaf means you can't hear, so maybe. It but effect, Like, you can't really hear, I think it's hearing yeah but Um, it could be swallowing because i I mean i don't think it's walking yeah i don't think it's walking either so anders your answer please um i think swallowing is swallowing p-h-a-g was your clue though i like seeing all those smiles last question for you number nine in the first round here 25 points in body systems since the since the lithosphere L-I-T-H-O, lithosphere, is the part of the earth that is solid, like soil and rocks. Lithotripsy is a medical procedure that can break up these inside your body. They're awfully painful. Bones, but I mean, I don't know why you, why you, want, why you would want to do that, but maybe well, like... Yeah, because they're also hard, but what else is like... I mean, it sounds painful, but I think it might be bones. Yeah. Say it again. Bones. Good. Bones is a good guess. Actually, stones, like kidney stones and gall stones was the answer there. Still a nice round for you, University Park. And that round, that 135 points. I like those smiles. We'll bring you back in just a couple of minutes and talk to you about yourselves and your school. See you in a minute. It is now time to meet the team from Yorktown Elementary School. And would you please say hello to their captain, Giselle. Giselle waved everybody at home. Look at her green screen back there. She's got that Yorktown Wildcat going behind her there. And we've got Layla here. Layla waved to everybody. And Riley Alicia also is here. Give us a nice big wave. All right. If you are ready, let's get started with your first, the first of your nine questions. It's a green things question worth five points. Here we go. Of all the green vegetables, the one most likely to do a podcast is this one, the same one that's often paired with carrots on your dinner plate. I think it might be peas because that's the only thing that I would do, pods. Yeah, peas and I pod. agree. Two peas in a pod. You got it. That's the way to start the game. Five points. Let's go to 15 points in green things. If you watched your favorite annual plants like geraniums and marigolds, die when the first hard freeze hit this year. The cause was the rupturing of these throughout the plant, barriers that give the plant its rigidity. When the freeze happens, 
what breaks and causes the plants to collapse and die? Well, I think it might be roots because the roots just hold them in place. What do you guys think? I agree with that. Well, actually, the roots, the roots oftentimes will survive in plants that are perennials, come back year after year after year. What we're talking about here are the cell walls. The cell walls will split apart, and that's what causes the plant to uh, lose its rigidity. Uh, try this next one for 25 points. All right, it's a three-part answer. So, algae blooms, like the destructive ones called red tides, they're terrible for fish occur when algae gets plenty of sunlight and these and three particular nutrients with the chemical symbols K, N, and P. For 25 points, what chemicals are they? K, the symbols K, N, and P. Essential for algae to grow in large numbers. I know one of them is potassium and N is nitrogen. Perfect, so we've got the K and the N. So the last one, come on, you can do it. What's the P? Um, um, oh, it's gonna be on the tip of your tongue. You're racking your brains. It's phosphorus. Phosphorus is P. That's the last of the nutrients. Let's go to the zoo. Zoo for five points. There are things called legless lizards. They look like snakes. But you can tell that a legless lizard is not a snake because it has these, which could, I suppose, give you a wink. Eyelids. Eyelids, that's it, perfect, for 15 points. If one of these terrestrial gastropods slowly crawls across your hand, your reaction might be, oh, I've been slimed. Uh, a snail? Snail, perfect, yeah. You listen to every clue, you're doing well. All right, for 25 points, I have a visual for you. I have a visual, and it's also a multiple choice. You know, there's an urban legend, a story that just won't go away. It's not true, but everyone believes it to be true. That story is that these rodents will migrate in huge numbers, jump off cliffs after one another, into the ocean, keep swimming until they drown. That doesn't happen. Are these rodents, is this rodent a lemming, a vole, or a pocket mouse? Well, lemmings live in the arches, I think. So... What do you guys think the answer is? A pocket mouse based on its size, I would think. Layla? Um, I agree with Riley. I agree as well. Okay, actually your first inclination, lemmings do live in the Arctic and they too go and jump into the ocean, but it's usually not that far. They oftentimes survive. So lemmings was the right answer there. Nice try. Let's go to the body systems for five points. When you go barefoot, it means you go without shoes. Barefoot, the bear there is spelled B-A-R-E. But a barefoot, B-E-A-R, as in bear, polar bear, is usually called one of these. It's not called a foot, it's called a what? A paw. A paw. So bears can go, well, if they wore shoes, they could go bear paw, bear paw. Okay, good. For 15 points, body systems. The song that goes, all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth, my two front teeth. Well, it's a plea to Santa to bring you a pair of incisors. But if you wanted Santa to bring you two back teeth, what M initial teeth are you looking for in your stocking? Molder. Molars. Molars is right. You got that. Thank you. For 25 points, let's get this one. Internal organs, there are internal organs that really aren't very substantial. One of them is this S-initialed organ that is easily damaged in car crashes and is a place where your worn out red blood cells go. A soft organ, hardly ever transplanted, you can live without it, easily damaged, 
by damage to your abdomen and a place where old red blood cells go when they've been used up. For 25 points. I would think your st organ. Your stomach. Um, but you can, can you live without it? Can live without it. I would think it's your stomach. Okay. I'm not sure. Correct answer there was spleen Yorktown, which means you end the first run. You're at 95 points. You're still going good. We'll give you a little break and we'll bring you back in a few moments. Good job. All right, it's time to welcome back the team from University Park. Let's find out a little bit about them and their school. And Anders, start us out here. Tell us, first of all, if you would, who your coach is. We, we gave a, a little plug at the beginning here and who your principal is. Um, Toy Davis and Mr. Favero is our Wonderful. Yes, and they both are such big sponsors and supporters of this game here, and we can't thank them enough. Now, you had a couple alternates, I believe. Can you give us their first names? Um, Miriam and um, trying to remember the other one. Um, um <laughs> Miriam and Kath. Wait, Catherine? No. Wait, I'm trying to remember. You know, see, I have a script and you don't. And I was, <laughs> don't worry about it. We'll bring them up and we'll get them to identify themselves, Andrews. You're, you're doing uh, a lot of hard work here already. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you like about University Park? Um, everyone's really nice and it's nice chatting with them in class when you have free time. Exactly. And won't it be nice when you can finally get back there and you don't have to communicate via Zoom and uh, Snapchat and everything else here. Uh, what do you want to do someday? Um, I want to be a programmer. I want to make video games. Wow, wow. That seems to be a, a desirable job for a lot of young people now, and I can see why. Keep up your good work in the second half here. Let's talk to Charlotte. Charlotte, come on up here, and let's find out about you, and tell us the Charlotte story. What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, well, I like to play with my dog and also, um, play on my trampoline in my backyard. Wow, that sounds like a, that's a lot of fun. Trampolines are so cool. What kind of dog do you have? Um, we have two dogs and they're both mixed breeds. Very nice, and what are their names? Sparks and Ollie. Oh, I like that. You know, I just read something that the, the best way to have gotten through the pandemic is to have a dog. You know, it's just a wonderful companion. So you got two special friends there. What do you want to do someday, Charlotte? Um, when I grow up, I want to be a politician. Ah, all right. Well, good luck at that. And uh, let's see you maybe up there in the west front of the Capitol sometime in the future taking that oath. You can do it. Nice to have you with us. Let's talk to your other teammate, Isaac. Hey, Isaac. Isaac, why'd you want to be on the Science Bowl? Well, I was kind of, I didn't really want to go at the first, but my teachers told me that I was really good at science, so I, so I, try, so I wanted to do it then. I'm glad. After you know, that. It takes, takes other people to see something in us that we don't see in ourselves. So I'm glad you did this. And let me ask you also, what are you thinking about uh, uh, for a job someday? I'm thinking of being either an engineer, scientist, or soccer player. Oh, I like that combination. You could probably do both of those. Play soccer, uh, you know, until you get a little older and then have that other uh, profession in your back pocket. All right, if you're ready, here are your second nine questions. We'll start with the let's get physical questions. Here we go. First one, worth five points. If a broken water main causes water to shoot into the sky, that's something you don't want to see. You might liken it to what natural shooting water that occurs regularly in Yellowstone National Park. Geysers. Geysers. Geyser is right, indeed. The old faithful geyser. Here's the 15-point question in Let's Get Physical. The booster rockets that lifted the space shuttles into orbit were capable of generating 3 million pounds of this T-initialed force. Thrust. Thrust. Perfect. 25 points in Let's Get Physical. Of all the glassware needed in the world today, none is in greater demand than these V-initialed containers for the coronavirus vaccines. Vials. 
Vials, yes, V-I-A-L-S. Good, good answer. Let's go to potpourri. You're cooking for five points. Because of tectonic movement and more precise measuring methods, it's been discovered that this tallest of the world's mountains is even taller than previously thought. Mount Everest? Mount Everest. It is Mount Everest. Everest. Yes, indeed. It is. It continues because of the movement of the earth. It seems to be rising. 15 points in potpourri. While a lubricant, L-U-B-R-I-C-A-N-T, while a lubricant, like oil, is the substance that reduces friction, a desiccant, D-E-S-I-C-A, I'll try it again, D-E-S-S-I-C-A-N-T, is a material often found in the pockets of new clothes or inside bottles of pills or salt shakers it keeps, they keep what from doing damage? Water or moisture? Water, yeah. water and moisture, absolutely right. It, a lot of times people will put rice grains into salt shakers. You probably have seen that happen. That means that the salt will keep them because it acts as a desiccant. Here's your 25 point question and it is a visual question in potpourri. The vaccines currently being given for COVID are designed to prompt your body's immune system to recognize the spikes from the virus and then start to produce what? Antibodies. 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 Perfect. Perfect. Dateline for five points. So few of these iconic orange and black butterflies are left that they're under consideration to be placed on the endangered species list. Um, monarch butterflies. Monarch. Boy, you all knew that one. Monarch butterflies, indeed. Here's your 15-point question in Dateline, and it is a visual question. What famous musician cut the legs off his piano so he could feel the vibrations through the floor because he suffered from otitis? Beethoven? Yeah, Beethoven. Beethoven, yes. Otitis is one of the reasons. It's a hardening of bones in the ear. And of course, we know he famously was deaf. Good answer, all of you. Last question in the game, a 25-pointer in Dateline. The new vaccines against COVID are using messenger RNA to cause our own bodies to produce the spiky tree-like structures on the virus's exterior. These spikes, like all of our other body parts, are these kinds of chemicals assembled from amino acids? Proteins? Proteins, absolutely right. So much of our body is protein. And that's what messenger RNA, boy, you guys look happy. You should. You did a super job here today. I think you maybe missed just one or two. You had a perfect second round, which means you end the game with 270 points. University Park, you did yourselves proud. All right, it's time to talk again to the team from Yorktown and find out a little bit about our players and their schools. And let's start with Giselle. Giselle, so nice to have you here today. And tell us, first of all, who your coach is and who your principal is. Our coach is Miss Morales, and our principal is Dr. Savoy. Dr. Savoy, yes. And they're out there. They're rooting for you guys, like I said at the beginning of the show. You've won already because you're here representing the school. You are elite students in Prince George's County. No matter what happens today, like I say, everybody really wins. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you want to do someday, Giselle? I want to be a herpetologist or do something with snakes because they're really cool and they're also really beautiful. And because people think that they're all really um, dangerous, but they aren't always dangerous. And because some snakes are just really underrated. Absolutely right. They, they perform a great service. They keep the rodent population down. And uh, I know the first time I picked up a corn snake, which is beautiful. I know you know corn snakes are. Uh, a lot of people think snakes are slimy. No, they are not. It's, it's a very dry field there. Herpetology, a great field. And uh, yeah, keep at that. I think uh, I always like to hear that young people are naturalists. Good luck in the second half. Let's meet your teammates. Where is Riley Alicia? Riley Alicia, tell us a little bit about uh, why you wanted to do that. Why did you want to be on the Science Bowl? I wanted to be on the Science Bowl team because I really enjoy science. And uh, I just, yeah, that's pretty much it. I really like science. And I've seen some of the competitions before, and I really like them. Yeah. You're in the right place if you like science. And not only do you like it, you know a lot about it. 
So obviously you're a good student and you, you stay up with the news. And are we looking at your room there? Is that your room? Uh, no, this is the workspace in my house. Ah, it, well, it looks very nice. It's very nice. It, and I like the lighting back there as well. What do you want to do someday? I would either like to be an artist, interior designer, or musician. Wow. All right. So a very creative young lady and stylish young lady as well. Nice to have you here. Let's talk to Layla. Layla. Layla, it's nice to have you here. How do you know so much science? Because you do. Um, uh, I don't really know. I guess I'm just smart. <laughs> you are just smart. That's right. No need to be humble. You are a smart young lady here. And what do you like to do in your spare time? Um, I like to paint and learn sign language. Wow. And why do you need sign language? Do you have someone? Uh, well, um, one of my aunt is deaf, so um, I like I want to learn it so I can talk to her. That's a wonderful thing to do. Uh, I know how much she must appreciate that. And do you have any career goals yet? Um, I want to be a doctor, preferably like a neurosurgeon. Wow, so you're going to go to the very top there. That's just wonderful. You have a lot of school ahead of you, but you're such a great student. I know you're going to do fine. So we have nine questions left. They're going to be in the categories. Let's get physical, science, potpourri, and dateline. So Yorktown, if you're ready, here is your first question, and let's get physical worth five points. While pennies used to be made mostly of copper, they're now mostly minted with this last chemical element on the periodic table. Um, so I think it's, I remember, do you guys remember what the last one is? Zinc, maybe? Yeah, zinc, yeah. you go to the Z, the last part of the alphabet. Thank you, Riley, Alicia, good answer. 15 points, let's get physical. Named after the actor Tom Hanks is 12818 Tom Hanks, which is one of these heavenly bodies that orbits between Mars and Jupiter. Moon? Do you guys think? What do you guys think? Yes. I agree. Now, both those planets do have moons, multiple moons in some cases, but the heavenly bodies that are in the that orbit between those two planets, they're called asteroids. Asteroids. So they named one after Tom Hanks. He was that actor in the movie Apollo 13. Let's move on to the 25 point question and let's get physical. The continental shelf that extends out from our shore, from out into the Atlantic Ocean, it goes into and under the ocean, is made up mostly of disintegrated shells which have become limestone. Limestone is one of these S initialed kinds of rocks. Fossils? Yes. Sedimentary? Oh, yeah. Sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous, and limestone is a sedimentary kind of rock. Good, you got those 25 points. That's excellent. Let's go to potpourri. Five points. President Teddy Roosevelt was once a Republican, but later founded another political party that has as its symbol not the Republican elephant, but rather one of these, America's largest deer, and Rocky the Squirrel's sidekick, Bullwinkle. A moose? A moose is right, yeah. He was in the Bull Moose Party. That's the way to do it, Giselle. Here's your 15-point question in potpourri. It's a visual. Look at this. Boy, I hope you were outside just about six weeks ago, less than that, and looked up something that you haven't seen in 800 years. We recently witnessed in the sky an event dubbed the Great Conjunction, the closest that what two largest planets have been in the last 800 years? Saturn and Jupiter, I do Yes, 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 Saturn and Jupiter. You guys, you're doing so well. Here's your 25-point question in potpourri. The man who invented Christmas lights, it should come as no surprise, was what very same man who invented the incandescent light bulb? Thomas Edison. Yes, Thomas Edison. Thank you, Riley, Alicia. Perfect. You got yourself another 25 points. Here's your dateline category questions. Dateline for five points. A new book called Circe, C-I-R-C-E, is about the famous Greek goddess who is able to turn men into these porcine creatures. She turned men into what? Stone? Possibly what do you guys think? We're looking for an animal. 
porcine, P-O-R-C-I-N-E. Sounds like pork. She turned them into pigs. She turned them into pigs. Let's go to the 15 point question. An expedition last year to reach the bottom of all five of Earth's oceans made headlines for the discovery of plastic bags found seven miles down in the Mariana Trench in the deepest of the five oceans. Which is which one? The Pacific? What do you guys think? I think it's the Pacific Ocean. It is the Pacific Ocean. Perfect. 15 points. Last question for you in the game. 25 points. The oldest of America's national parks is greener these days because wolves have been introduced and they're scaring away the elk and the elk then are eating fewer trees, which is why this park, America's oldest national park, is greener. Yellowstone. Oh, you were all smiling. You knew that one way back. You didn't need all that. Good answer, guys. You end the game here. Yorktown with 210 points. Give yourselves a pat on the back. You did a super job here. Great second round. All right, what a game we had. We expected it would be a battle of titans here because both these schools have done so well in our 35-year history. Our final tally today is Yorktown, 210 points. University Park, 270 points. So University Park, UP, congratulations. Let's give them a round of applause. And let's also keep clapping for Yorktown for a wonderful game here today. And our alternates are out there. Wave all of our alternates. Yes, we've got Ethan from Yorktown. We have Miriam from University Park. We have Catherine from University Park. We have Coach Favero. We have Miss Davis, the wonderful principal at University Park. We have Dr. Safford, the equally wonderful principal at Yorktown. And we have Ethan Michael, the alternate there. What a group. We hope you all had a good time here today. We certainly did. See you next time. I'm Dave Zarin on the Science Bowl. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye. <laughs>